This is your weekend edition of your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, April 14. It's confirmed the highly contagious Omicron BA2 subvariant of the COVID-19 virus is in Barbados. Health and Wellness Minister Ian Gooden Edjo made a disclosure tonight as he reported on the results of tests conducted. Based on the results of samples sent to the Carfa lab in Trinidad for analysis, I am now confirming that the BA2 subvariant of COVID does exist in Barbados. In fact, 90% of the samples sent to Carfa were found to be positive for this Omicron variant, which is highly contagious but which does not generally lead to serious illness. The health minister said that since March 28, the island has recorded 5,104 new infections, and according to the latest data, 428 new cases were recorded on Wednesday, resulting in a record high positivity rate of 28%. Gooden Edgel said there will be no change in protocols, but he urged Barbadians to exercise their caution. As we head into our long Easter weekend, I once again advise that the tightening of any of the protocols is not being considered. But at the same time, I am sure that Barbadians as a whole will practice restraint, discipline and moderation with their social activities and interactions over the next few days. No evidence of wrongdoing. That's the findings of investigations into two recent issues on the girls' compound of the government industrial school. Minister Abrams made clear that recent reports of an attempted escape by some wards at the institution were false. I tell you that we as a board are very comfortable that the suggestions that are rampant out there about the mistreatment of these youngsters at the facility are baseless are completely baseless. Minister Abrams also provided an update on police investigations into a report last year that a naked 14-year-old girl was placed in a cell. The police did their full investigation, talked to all the staff, they interviewed um, some of the students, they interviewed everybody and found at the end of the day that there was no abuse of the student and there's nothing to warrant criminal charges. Of note is the fact that the young lady who was the subject of this and her mother, uh, her family, declined to comment or give any evidence in this matter. But even though they declined to cooperate in the investigation and the approach was made to them more than once, the police still did their full investigation and recommended, they said they can keep it open in case the um, young lady and her family wish to come forward subsequently, right? But as it stands now, for all practical purposes, that investigation has reached its natural end, and we are satisfied that the young lady was not abused. And Barbados will roll out the red carpet for the President of the Republic of Rwanda this Easter weekend. The President is scheduled to arrive at the Granley Adams International Airport for an official one day visit tomorrow during which he is expected to engage in meetings and several activities. On Saturday, the President will pay a courtesy call on President named the Most Honorable Sandra Mason and co-chair a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley. He will also participate in a press conference and plant a tree in the National Botanical Garden and observe a raw tennis match before he leaves the island. The visit coincides with government's trust to expand and deepen relations with the countries in Baikal. Operations of the Bell Pump Station are for the most part back on track. The Barbados Water Authority reported that work on the pumps has been completed and tested by its team and the station is once again able to pump 9 million gallons of water per day into the system. Over the last five days, workmen from the state-owned water company and private contractors have been repairing the substructure that supports the Bell Pumping Station. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. New Brunswick Sardine Filets, boneless, ready to eat. 
perfect son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is hard. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. No abuse of the student and there's nothing to warrant criminal charges. Of note is the fact. To regional news in Jamaica, one public health expert has expressed shock at government's decision to remove the mask mandate and COVID-19 testing. We get the details from Television Jamaica. The public mask mandate and the requirement for people traveling to Jamaica to get tested for COVID-19 will be lifted on Friday, April 15th. The relaxation of the measures mean people will no longer need to wear a mask while in public places. The new rules also mean that people traveling to Jamaica will no longer need to present a negative COVID-19 test taken at least three days prior to visiting the island. But public health expert Dr. Winston Davidson is questioning the government's decision to end the COVID-19 testing requirement for visitors coming to Jamaica. Uh, thousands of persons will come to Jamaica for vacation. Thousands of persons, will, uh, returning residents, will come back to Jamaica for not only for vacation but for uh, family visits, etc. And this is where Jamaica finds that we get the infection spreading among the population. The testing is important, screening to prevent persons who are infected from coming to Jamaica. And if you get rid of the testing, how do you prevent those persons who have a positive test coming in? Because you don't know whether they're positive or the negative. On the international front, South Africans have begun to clean up after torrential rains and flooding caused widespread damage. Life is slowly returning to normal in Inanda, outside of Durban, three days after torrential rain and flooding caused widespread damage. This is the first day Kloni Pani Pakamani has been able to operate his food business, which he relies on for a daily income. The floods have really affected us. The people who used to support us could not come and buy because they were not even going to work. Even the little money they had, they had to use elsewhere. With the water and electricity supplies still cut off, Klonipani does not have any way to keep his stock. City officials are yet to begin clearing and rebuilding some of the roads and bridges which collapsed or were destroyed by mudslides. At her home, Tola Kelemsom is cleaning up. She says as the flood level reached as high as the rooftop, her five children just managed to make it out safely. I've lost everything. My kids' birth certificates, school books and clothes, my fridge, my television. Nothing's working, as you can see around here, and I've not received any help. I only managed to get blankets from my neighbour. Resident Notando Zibuyile says some food has been distributed, but people in this ward have not received any, and they have to make use of whatever they can to get by. Most of my community members are using the stream where the water, we don't even know where it's coming from, so to uh, wash our laundry and also drink from this uh, contaminated water. While people try to recover, it could be short-lived. More rain is expected in the coming days. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.